up till now we talked about deficiency symptoms which are due to the absence or deficiency of macro and micro nutrients now we will discuss the toxicity symptoms of micronutrients toxicity symptoms are caused when that element is in little extra concentration these micronutrients number 1 they are required in very small quantity required in very small concentration and that is why slight decrease in that required concentration would cause deficiency and slight increase from that required concentration would cause toxicity slight increase causes toxicity and slight decrease causes the deficiency and that is why this concentration is very peculiar or particular and this varies from element to element so how do we define that concentration it is that mineral concentration which reduces the dry weight of tissue by 10% so we are talking about that concentration of mineral or mineral iron we can say here the concentration of mineral iron which reduces the dry weight of the tissue by 10% is considered as toxic so when would we call that this concentration is toxic when that concentration reduces the dry weight by 10% and this is different for different elements and that is why we are not writing any specific figure here this is one important thing the next important thing is that these micronutrients sometimes when they are toxic that means if we take the example of one that is manganese so what would be manganese toxicity symptoms so what we are talking here is that certain micronutrients when they are in higher concentration that is micronutrients toxicity decreases absorption of other nutrients we need to understand this because this is exactly what is going to help us understand the toxicity symptoms we have taken the example of manganese here and we want to understand what would be the toxicity symptom of manganese if manganese is more that means its concentration is that much that it is reducing the dry weight of the tissue by 10% so we are considering that concentration as toxic concentration of manganese but it has been observed that when manganese concentration is more then there are three things which are observed we are talking about this toxic concentration and this is toxic concentration so when manganese iron concentration is more in the plant then what happens first thing manganese competes with iron and magnesium for uptake that means when manganese is there and these two are also there that is iron and magnesium that is 
ferric iron and magnesium iron. Then there would be a competition for the uptake of these elements. And manganese is going to compete with it. And whenever there is competition, say we take a situation that manganese was not there. Then only ferric would get absorbed or only magnesium would get absorbed. But with manganese iron concentration more, approximately 50% would be manganese which gets absorbed and only 50% of ferric or magnesium. That means absorption of ferric and magnesium ion has been reduced. So higher concentration of manganese decreases the absorption of iron and magnesium. This is one problem when manganese is more. The second thing which has been observed is high manganese competes with magnesium for enzyme binding we know that enzymes have binding sites and magnesium for example is the substrate which is binding with that enzyme and if manganese competes with it then again approximately 50 percent sites or active sites of the enzyme it is going to be manganese which is going to bind there and only remaining 50% or approximately 50% would magnesium bind with the enzyme. Again, if magnesium is responsible for a particular process and only 50% binds to the enzyme as substrate, obviously it would decrease the product formation. So, manganese competes with magnesium to bind with enzymes. The third thing which has been observed is high manganese concentration decreases the translocation of calcium to shoot apex. When we were talking about calcium, we said it is required for cell wall formation because that middle lamella of cell wall is made up of calcium pectate. So it is required in the uh, meristematic cells when the new cells are forming and the cell walls are to be formed. But if manganese concentration is more, calcium will not be translocated to that shoot tip or shoot meristem where the cells are dividing. So by understanding these three things, what we can conclude is that the toxicity symptoms of manganese are actually deficiency symptoms of iron, magnesium and calcium because this is when in higher concentration is found that iron would be less, magnesium would be less and even calcium would not reach the place where it is required. So, what we can say here is symptoms of manganese toxicity are actually the deficiency symptoms of iron, magnesium and calcium. So, it is very difficult to pinpoint the toxicity symptom and that is why we took this example of manganese because when manganese concentration is more then we see that iron absorption is less, magnesium absorption is also less and calcium is not moving to the place where it is required. So when we talk of toxicity symptom of a particular element it could be the deficiency of some other element and this can be very well understood with this manganese and these three uh, other elements. So when we say toxicity we normally define it as that concentration which is going to reduce the dry weight by 10%. But what exactly is causing this? It could be the higher concentration of one and less concentration of other that means Toxicity could be due to higher concentration of one element and 
deficiency of the other and that is why it is very difficult to pinpoint that this is toxicity symptom of a particular element so this is what we understand from toxicity now let us talk about how these elements they get translocated and from where so we will talk about the source from where these elements are taken and the translocation process now source or the reservoir so soil acts as the reservoir of these essential elements or essential nutrients now how do these nutrients or these mineral elements they come into the soil there are two processes by which these essential nutrients or which we call minerals they come into the soil there are two processes first is weathering of rock weathering of rocks is the breakdown of rock during soil formation and this weathering can take place by various activities due to chemicals which we call chemical weathering like some acids or something physical weathering is due to temperature fluctuations or uh, glaciers hitting uh, the rocks and biological weathering when there are organisms growing on that rock and their excretory material break down the rocks this is one by which the mineral elements come into the soil so we can write here as by physical weathering chemical weathering and biological so by these uh, processes the mineral elements which are in the rock in the form of some uh, fixed compounds they are broken down to release those smaller simpler compounds which can be absorbed by the plant now this is one the second uh, source by which or mode by which these elements come into the soil is bacterial action on organic matter when this organic matter gets added into, into the soil in the form of dead bodies of plants and animals these bacteria they act on those dead material and release those compounds in the form of mineral elements again coming into the soil so by weathering of rocks or by bacterial action these mineral elements come into the soil and that is why we consider soil as the reservoir of all these essential elements now how is how are these elements translocated so let us also take translocation of elements the elements which are in the soil they get absorbed with the help of roots through water or other processes we'll discuss that later and once it is into the plant then which is that tissue which is helping in this transportation or translocation of these elements these elements get translocated through xylem so xylem is the tissue which is helping in translocation of these elements and that is why whenever we talk about function of xylem we say it helps in translocation or transportation of water and minerals because all these minerals which are absorbed they also come along with water and xylem which carries water would also carry these elements and this has been experimentally proved by using radioisotopes radioisotopes of these mineral uh, elements were used and they were found in xylem sap so these isotopes of these minerals were detected in xylem sap and that confirms 
confirmed that if that element is absorbed, then it is present in xylem sap. That means xylem is the tissue which is helping in translocation of these elements. So up till now what we have seen is that there are certain elements which are deficient. Certain elements cause toxicity symptoms also. And soil is the reservoir and xylem is the tissue with which or through which these elements are transported. Now in the next video, we will talk about the process or mechanism of absorption of these elements.